Hi, welcome to Wine and Paint with Chafee Arts. My name is Sabrina Carter. Today we're going to be recreating this beautiful mountain sunset. Your supplies today are going to be an 8x10 canvas. You're going to have six colors of paint. You've got a blue, an orange, a green, yellow, white, and black. You'll have two paint brushes, one medium sized and one small sized. You should also have a cup for some water. You also need a paper towel to wipe off your brush in between colors. It is a water-based paint, but it does not wash out of your clothes. So you might want an apron, a uh, cooking apron is fine, or just a t-shirt that you're not going to be upset about it getting paint on. All right, so we're gonna get started by painting the canvas fully. We're gonna cover it with your base color. And as you can see here and here, that base color is gonna be uh, a yellow color. It starts from the top here and it's gonna go all the way down. We're gonna work in the other colors as we go. Okay, so what you wanna do is take your medium brush and we're gonna go ahead and start working it in to the canvas. Get it as thick as you can. You're gonna have some mountains and some water down at the bottom, so I wouldn't worry about the bottom too much, but get that top half as thick as you can. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to make sure you get the edges of your canvas. As it's not framed, you're going to want to see your, uh, your image cross the borders as you walk by it when it's hanging on the wall. So get all of those edges. We don't want to see any white. The more paint you have on your canvas, the thicker and the more dimensional your piece is going to look when it's done. So go ahead and put as much as you can on there. We're using acrylic paints. So they don't take long to dry in between, in between your colors. As you can see, I've got the edges all the way up to the top there. Get the sides. You're gonna be layering. So whatever you're missing here, you're gonna put more color on top of it later. All the way down. I'm gonna clean your brush for the next color. That next color is gonna be orange we have here and as you can see the sunset rises with the orange into the yellow behind these mountains here so we're going to start from the bottom and work up and don't worry that that yellow is not dry yet because it's going to create a nice blend in the middle there Okay, remember to get your bottom edge as well. Go about halfway up. Our mountains will be somewhere here in the middle, so we want that orange to just peek up over the mountains. So about halfway, and then do some blending horizontally here in the middle. You can see how that yellow and that orange create that fade, that sunset fade. So now we've got our background sunset in there. Doesn't that look nice? So we can see where it's gonna go with your fade in there. And as we work later on with some of our other colors, we're gonna add some white in there. You can get creative mixing up that sunset and um, getting it as realistic as you can. The next thing that we're gonna do, we're working from back to front. So you can see that in the back, we've got our sunset colors. And just before that, we've got some of our mountains here. Uh, 
then we've got some more mountains and then we'll work into this hillside and the trees. So the next thing at this point here, at this stage, is gonna be our background mountains. Um, and we don't have to wait for this to dry too much. It's already drying as we're kind of switching colors here. So we can go ahead and take our thin brush. It should be about this size, nice and small. We're gonna create a line of mountains here. You can get creative with how you, you want your mountains to look. We're gonna take our dark blue. We're just gonna kind of create a line in the background here, however you like. I like to have kind of a dip in the middle so that we can see where that sunset's gonna peak in between the mountains. A little line in there to indicate where your mountains are gonna stand. Uh, we can go ahead and take another line just to kind of figure out where we want our foreground mountains to go. Uh, I like a little peak over here. So we've got a peak of a mountain in the front. We've got these two mountains in the back there. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and fill those in. We're gonna want our medium sized brush for that. We're gonna go ahead and fill in these dark mountains. You've got the color, this dark blue color here. You've also got a white. So you can take both of those and kind of uh, figure out what kind of blue works best for you. I like to put a light blue in the background because it looks like it's more distant with that lighter color. It also might look snow capped if you just put a few white streaks in there. A little dark down at the bottom. So play around with your blue and your white. Okay, and again, remember to work around those edges. Because it looks really nice when you have it hanging on the wall and you walk by and you can see it wrap around the canvas. So we're gonna keep filling in our mountains here. I like to put that darker blue down at the bottom and add some white again toward the top. Okay, so now we've got most of our background mountain in there. We don't wanna see that orange peeking through. So go ahead and pile it on. A little white at the top. Let's make it seem like we've still got some snow caps up there. So those are filled in. I like to do this um, foreground mountain a little bit darker. Okay, it shows that it's lower in height and um, there's a little bit more shadow in it when it's in the foreground. You've got those trees um, in front creating that shadow. So I like to go pretty dark with that one. It also helps you to contrast. So you can see uh, between these two mountains, there's one in front, there's one in back. So if you make it a little bit darker, you can see that edge there. Since this one is in the foreground and we wanna create some, uh, some dimensionality here, we're going to bring it all the way down. This, is, this foreground is gonna thicken up as we add more paint. So you've got that line there, that dark and that light really makes it look like two sets of mountains. Again, we're gonna put a lake scene in here. We've got a uh, small grassy hill coming up front. So this is gonna get plenty of thickness. You can use your small brush. A small brush will give you more of an edge on the tops of these mountains. You can see that there's a little, um, you can see through that brush stroke a little bit with that thick, that thicker brush. But if you go ahead and 
give it a little bit of an edge with that small brush. You can make it pop just a bit more. And don't worry about your yellow blending into the mountains. That'll give it that uh, reflective look as if the sun is shining off your mountaintops. So do not worry about your blending. It does not have to be crystal clear. The more blending you have, the more realistic it looks, more natural. I love that white there at the top. It really looks, it really looks the way that it does when I look out my front window there. You can see the mountains. So at this point, we're just gonna let that bottom half of the canvas dry just a bit. We're gonna eat some of our Sorelli's. We're gonna have some wine. Let this breathe for a minute. So it's only been a few minutes and you can see that to the touch here, our mountain's pretty dry. It does not take long at all for that mountain to dry. So we can go ahead and get this tree line going in here. And that's a really dark color. So we're gonna wanna take our black for that and our small brush. If your paint is getting a little too thick, you can add some water to it that thins it down so you can get a nice smooth line. So what we're gonna wanna do is just create a little bit of a line in here where you want that tree line to go, just straight across, okay? You can even arch it a little bit if you feel like you want your water to curve around the bend. But just find a starting point for where you want that tree line to go. Then we're gonna go ahead and put some tree lines in there. We're fading around the back, so these are gonna be smaller lines. We're gonna get bigger as we go over here. So they're just kind of lines of where you think those trees are gonna go. Pretty small down there, just a tiny bit taller as we go around the curve. This is our water curve. Few curves, I'm moving to go right around the canvas here, just because I want it to look seamless on my wall. We got small, larger. Okay, I might want a really tall tree in there. It's up to you. This is your work of art, so get creative with it however you like. I'm just gonna give you the basis for where we're gonna have things go. Now, as I'm working my trees in, I'm just going to start from the tip of that tree, each one, and just kind of pull, pull down a little bit, like little Christmas trees in the background there. These ones um, are going to get covered by that grassy uh, mountain or that grassy hill in the foreground. So not too much detail in those ones. You're just going to pull left and right, left and right on the sides, sides of those lines that you created in there. I like to use a lot of water. The water helps to fill in those dry spots in your paint. Where you can see the background color, you're gonna wanna add some water to your paint so that it disappears. Pulling down, left and right, left and right. With my small brush. Okay, make those trees any size you like. Small, tall, we're gonna have some large trees come in the foreground later on. But this is just a shadow of what's in the background there. That little forest at the foot of your mountain. We're gonna give these trees a little bit of color in a moment. We're just creating that shadow effect in the background first. See how my tree line is getting a bit taller as we go from left to right. That just shows a bit of movement in the river or your lake in front. Use your water not just for cleaning your brush, but for also adding some liquid into your paint to help it flow better onto your canvas until you make it all the way across. Again, right around my edge with the tree line. This is again going to take a very short time to dry. So as it's drying, we're going to work in some green tips on those trees because blending is a good thing. We want that black and green to blend in. 
So feel free to go ahead and take some of that black and some of that green on your brush at the same time to help that blending happen. And just pull down again a little bit left and right to give it a peak of green. Okay, that looks like the sun is hitting the tops of those trees there as they curve around the bend. I like to put a little bit more green on the right edge of the tree line because this edge over here is going to wrap around the back and get darker into the shadows. So just a bit of green on your treetops, maybe some in the body of your trees. Just a hint of sun catching those trees. Again, around my edges as well. Just left and right to show those branches kind of reaching out. So I've got a little bit of green here on my treetops that are curving around uh, this water bend here. We've got green and yellow. If you want to make those treetops a little bit brighter, mix some yellow into that green. You get a nice, a nice bright green. Give it several different colors in there. Plus that yellow brings in that, that uh, sunshine color down to your treetops. You can also miss, mix into your green some of the black to get a darker green. And you get all shades in there. You get a dark green, a medium green, very bright yellowy green. The more you have in there, the more alive it's gonna look. I think I'm ready to go ahead and get that little hillside in there. Now the very green hillside, so we're gonna take our green color and just kind of mark out where we want that to go. Uh, it's gonna kind of cross the mountains over here and into the water, covering up some of those background trees. Uh, you can have it low, you can have it high in the middle. It's up to you to decide. I like mine right there on the edge of the mountain. Dipping into the center of my water. And again, anything you do to these canvases that you don't like, you can always change after it just dries a little bit and go ahead and work right on top of that paint. So I've marked out my hillside there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill it in. I'm gonna use my green, get my medium sized brush, I'm gonna fill that space in. I really like how that color, that bright green color pops off of that dark background there, it really creates some layer and dimension. All right, and again, I get my edges. Put some green on those edges in there. Okay. Okay, now it wraps around beautifully. Get the bottom as well. If you hang it up high, you're gonna see that bottom edge. So you wanna paint as much of the uh, edges as you can. Top, side, bottom, get all of it. Nice and thick. You're gonna have plenty of paint there. You might even have some left over when you're done. This is a small canvas. You can use whatever paint you have left over on another project. Okay, there's our hillside. What I wanna do with this hillside now is put some texture in it. And I'm gonna do that by taking our green, adding some black to some of it to get a darker green. So you don't need several bottles of paint of different shades of green. You can create your own shades of green with just black and white. So I've got some black and some green here on my palette. And I might just, I like it kind of down here in the corner. That makes it look like the hill is wrapping. So I'm gonna do some dark, and you can pull back and forth between those two greens. You got your light green up here and your dark down here. If you pull back and forth, you'll create that shadow, that hill shadow as it curves down the side, okay? 
Now in our hill, we've got some grass and some brush poking up. So go ahead and put a few splotches in there to make it look like you've got edges and curves inside your bushes. And now we can take our green. I'm gonna wash my brush so it's not muddy. Wash and dry it. Okay, I'm gonna take some of my green again and my white to make a lighter green. Just work with it until you get a color that you like. You don't want it to be too far off from the colors that you've already got in there. I like that color right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and give a sunny edge to my hill. Kind of uh, stroking on that hill, using kind of a spongy technique here. And you know what, just like I added yellow into my green up here on the treetops, I'm gonna add some yellow into my green again. There are so many colors you can create with just these six that you've got here. Okay, I'm gonna go back and forth with some of my darks and some of my lights. Just let that dry a bit before we go ahead and add our foreground trees in. All right, we've got our hillside in there. It's got some texture and some color in it with all those layers that came from the background into the foreground and our sponging technique. So it's gonna look um, like real brush when we're looking at it from afar. Next thing we're gonna do is add those foreground trees. And just the same way that we did this here, we're gonna take our small brush and we're gonna map out a few a few lines, add some water so you get a nice fluid line. Bring my line down somewhere there on the top of the mountain, the top of that hill. And I'm gonna do another one right here maybe. And I'll just do a third one. It's up to you to decide where you want those trees and how much of the mountain you're gonna cover in the back. I might just do those two. Let's start with two trees. You can always Change it as you go, decide whether you like a little bit more, uh, maybe one in the center here. It's up to you, but I'm gonna start with these two trees and see how it goes. So just like these ones in the back, I'm gonna take some black and some green mixed together. So I want some of that sunset to shine through the trees. So as I go left and right, I might leave a little bit of color, a little bit of that yellow color peeking through. And I'm starting with this one up here. To the, to the left, because I want this other one that comes further down the mountainside to be in front of it. So I wanna do the background first. Black and some green. It's up to you to decide the shade of those trees. But I like to start with dark and work light on top of it. So left and right, around the sides. The base, see that yellow shining through the background there? That's really pretty, I like that. I wanna keep that in there. Okay, my tree's gonna get a little bit bushier toward the bottom. Making it very dark at first, but it will lighten up as we add more color into it. I like my water in there helps your brush to flow better across the canvas. You'll notice that too, as you keep working with this. Just getting my edge in there. You don't have to be too specific about the edge. And we don't want to uh, worry about it drying too quickly here because we're gonna blend those greens together as we work down the tree with some lighter colors. So now I'm gonna go with my green, my green by itself. Go ahead and lighten up some of those branches with some touches left and right again on the left side. 
Then on the right side. Now we've kind of hidden that second tree line, but it's gonna pop forward as we work on that one. So back to your dark green, which is a little bit of green and a very little bit of black because black goes a long way in mixing. And just swirl it around until you get a nice even color. And from the top, I'm gonna go left and right. I'm gonna leave some of that sunset in there still. Some water, pull it all the way down. I like to define that tree trunk in the middle with just a few, few lines of that black in the middle where your tree trunk was originally. Wash your brush. Let's get a little bit of sunlight on that tree with some lighter green. Again, you can use white and green. You can mix some yellow in there to get a nice bright color. Some sun catching the top of that tree and some of those branches that kind of uh, lean off to the right side of your canvas. Just kind of squiggle it as you go down to the left and the right, little squiggles. Now, I think that I'm going to leave it at just these two trees, just because of the way my mountain peak is right there. I want to keep that peak in the picture, so I'm going to leave it there. If your peak ended up somewhere over here or somewhere up here like I have in the sample painting, then you can go ahead and fill it in with some more trees. Um, just do it how you feel, uh, what makes sense to you. At this point, we've got all of our elements in there. And the only thing that we have left to do is to just add some detail. And I like to add some detail in my, my river down here. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna wash my brush. Most of the time we're gonna be working with this small brush because uh, it helps us to get detail in. Um, the, the larger brush, that medium brush, is gonna help you to fill in blocks of color, but the small brush is what you're gonna be working with mostly. Cleaned my brush. I want to work on this water down here. So I got, I've got my blue, I've got my white, and I like to have a kind of a streak across my water. Like there's some reflection, some dark and light happening in there. I'm gonna go horizontally in some streaks. I'm gonna go back and forth with darks and lights to make it look like that water is kind of flowing, rippling. I can still see some orange down here at the bottom of my canvas. So I'm just gonna turn it and make sure that the river flows all the way down. And I'm gonna keep touching up my, my ripples in here with some darks and some lights. With a small canvas, you're not gonna need very much detail because it's gonna stand out um, when, you're, when you're back or you're walking past it on the wall. Um, with this large canvas, I decided to add a lot of detail and I went ahead and put this little rock line in here. You can do that on here. Let's go ahead and do that with some orange and some green, just a tiny bit of both. It's a very small space. So we're gonna make a very small rocky edge there. And if you add that orange and green together, you're gonna get something that looks a little brown. More green for a darker brown, more orange for a lighter brown. And I'm just gonna create a few little rocky bumps in there. Not much, just a few spots around my edge as well. At this point, you're just playing with your painting. You're making it look, you're making it look how you like it. You're giving it um, some of your character. Put a dark edge under those rocks. You've got all your elements in there. 
Now you're just going to play with your painting. We're going to wait until the very end to put that, that nice circular sunset in there. Is with your cup. You can choose the size, something round. Um, we've also got this nice lid here from your paint. So you can use something like that. Take my paint lid and I'm going to put some white with my medium brush. I'm going to paint it right onto the top of my lid there. If you're very good with creating circles um, by hand without guidance, go ahead and do that. It's very difficult to do though. So I've painted my lid, put some white on there, and I'm just going to find a good spot for it and press it. Press it in. I've got an outline. I can drag it around. And then I can work with some of that yellow and orange again to just kind of pull it in. Pull some white in. Oh, it's important to clean your brush. So I'm going to pull some of that white into the middle. We just want a hint of a sunset in there. Okay. And then some yellow around the edge, maybe even some orange. There we go. We got a nice mountain sunset. Feel free to work with your mountains some more, work with your, your trees, your river, add some more detail, some more thickness, um, make it your own. And there you have it. We hope you have enjoyed your evening of simple happiness at home and want to see your final product. Either email us at chafeyarts at gmail.com or visit our Facebook page to share pictures from your Take and Paint adventure. For information on future Chafee Arts events, like us on Facebook.